This is problem number four from your review. We're looking at related rates problems. The first one takes a look at a hot air balloon rising straight up, straight up from a level field and tracked by a range finder 500 feet away. So this is your balloon that's going up. And this is your range finder that's looking at it. Uh, 500 feet from the spot of liftoff. At the moment, the range finder's angle of elevation is. Ooh, we don't have an angle of elevation here. So let's uh, let's put 45 degrees here. And it's increasing at a rate of uh, 0.14 radians per minute. So at some point we have an angle. The angle is changing so although it's really tempting to put the angle to be 45 degrees we don't want to um, we don't want to put it in just yet. So this is in degrees. The other thing is that this is in radians per minute. So we have to be careful to make sure we switch back and forth as needed. Okay so we have an X that's rising and that's how fast the balloon is rising at some moment and so it looks like we're going to need to find out dx dt uh, we have uh, our angle given as a constant but it's since angle is changing we're going to use this later I'll say use later and we have the angle is changing at a rate of 1.14 radians per minute okay so we're dealing with minutes we're dealing with uh, radians and degrees so we need to fix that and uh, we're dealing with feet so this if we were going to assign units to this would be in feet per minute. Alright, now that we have our picture we want to see if we can create an equation out of this. So the equation is, it looks like we have an angle and we have an opposite side and adjacent side so that looks like a good candidate for the tangent. So the tangent is uh, the opposite, which is x, divided by the adjacent, which is 500. So I think we're ready to just take the derivative. So let's ddx this, or ddt. We're taking the derivative with respect to time in minutes. So a derivative of the tangent is secant squared theta times the derivative of theta with respect to t. Remember, this is all implicitly defined so we're taking an implicit differentiation uh, 1 over 500 and if you were to take 1 over 500 times x the derivative of that is the constant 1 over 500 times the derivative of x again with respect to t is dx dt and so that's what we're looking for right here we have d theta dt and we have theta to be 45 degrees so I think we're all set we can just put in all those values and we can solve for dx dt well let's just solve for dx dt right here because it looks like it's easy enough to multiply both sides by 500 and then we have the secant squared of 45 degrees times 0.14 radians per minute. <clears throat> so, the only thing we left to do is figure out what the secant of 45 degrees is, and remember to put the secant into the uh, 1 over cosine business. So this is really 1 over cosine of 45 degrees quantity squared see cosine 45 I believe is cosine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2 cosine 45 degrees 
squared is 2 over 4 or 1 half. And the reciprocal of that is just equal to 2 over 1. So I think that's it. We have 500 times 2 times 0.14. So this is 1,000 times 0.14. So we'll take this and move this four decimal or three places, 140. And remember the units was feet per minute because it's the rate of change for dx dt. So the balloon is rising at 140 feet per minute. The next uh, problem we have is talking about a cone-shaped funnel with a radius 4 and height 6. So we have a funnel with a radius equal to 4 and the height equal to 6 inches. And um, we want to know the height of the liquid begins decreasing at a certain rate. So let's say this is the liquid over here in the middle of all this liquid coming out. And the height is decreasing at 1 inch per minute. So it looks like what we need to do, let me see if I can get a flat picture of this with triangles. I have a 4 and a 6 over here. And then I also have another triangle with a radius r that looks like the radius is changing and a height that looks like it's changing. <coughs> so um, we also have the idea that this is uh, this is an H and an R relationship, but we also have the volume relationship. So we need to look at the cone. Volume of a cone is uh, one third pi r squared h, and so this is our volume of this cone over here. This is how much water or how much juice is coming out. Um, and then this looks like uh, something that we can use in terms of what we're looking for because what are we given? We're given that uh, the height is decreasing so the dh dt is decreasing at one inch per second the fact that it's decreasing means it probably should be negative. How fast is uh, the juice coming out in cube per second? So I think that's what we're looking for is the volume, the change in volume coming out. Now it would make sense that we're coming out with the volume so this is a negative number and this is cubic inches per second. So that's dv dt. The only unfortunate thing is that uh, we don't know what r is. And so we would be ready to go with this information except we don't, we don't have any values for r. Well, except we can find a relationship between h and r. So maybe if we can write r as a function of h, we can replace that. So let's see what we can do with that. Uh, it looks like we can uh, use similar triangles. We have um, R over H is equal to 4 over 6. And I'm interested in getting R by itself, so I think if I just multiply by H here, I can get R by itself. So let's call that 2 thirds. So then I can replace that h, 1 third pi, and then replace that r, I mean, with 2 thirds h. Now I have the volume as a function of only h, and that's the information that we have. 
Uh, so let's square this. This becomes uh, 4 and 9. 9 and uh, 3 is 27. So this would be 4 pi over 27. And then h is raised to the third power. Uh, one more piece of information that was given here is that the, the liquid, the height of the liquid is 2 inches. Again, this is a piece of information that we're going to hold off. We don't put it in before we take the derivative. We'll use that for later. Because our height is changing, so we don't want to fix the height constant. So we'll leave it like this. All right, this is our step. DDT and then the derivative of V with respect to T is dV dt and this 3 comes down so that's going to cancel the 27 we'll do that later so 3 H squared times the derivative of H with respect to T that's dH dt And I think that's it. We have now we can use the value of 2 for h. We can use the value of negative 1 for dh dt. And we are solving for dv dt. So dv dt is equal to, now let's cancel this and let's call it 4 ninths pi times h. We found h to be 2 and now it's being squared and this is going to be a negative one inch per second and so we could just put this together this is a four that makes that into a 16 16 over nine times pi so I would leave my answer like that this is in cubic inches per second So that would be my answer. So for related rates types problems, I would suggest that uh, if you want more practice to Google, uh, go ahead and just Google related rates. And there's uh, several kinds of problems to look at. The, there's a ladder problem that's available or that the book has. Uh, I would suggest looking at the latter problem. Uh, remember the conical pile problem that was done in the homework? That's another standard problem. So between the two that we did and uh, these conical pile problems or the latter problems and, and anything else that we might have done in class, so I'll, I'll choose from one of those um, but I think it is important that you know the concept, the ideas of doing a related rates problem so that when you do run into a related rates problem you'll, it won't be too hard. Okay.